what is the number one thing that makes up these five factors of your credit score. The number one thing is What's up, what's up everybody? What's going on? You know who it is. Bob, B-O-B, -B, nothing but the best of the best here on Cakeology once again with everybody. How's you doing? How's you doing? So we're here today to discuss how can we get excellent credit? How can we be in the 800s? How to get that score and to get all of our dreams realized at the same time. Well, first of all, we gotta know what is what is this score? How do different companies calculate this score, okay? So the main score that most lenders will use is the FICO score. Now FICO has its own formula, has its own algorithm that it's used to calculate your score, to calculate my score, to calculate our credit score. Other companies, they use a Vantage score, which is a different formula on how they calculate this score, okay? So for example, if you're on Credit Karma or Credit Sesame, uh, even a lot of the credit monitoring services, they're gonna give you a Vantage score, okay? And according to Vantage, you have excellent credit when your score is between 750 and 850, okay? Now, FICO, which most lenders use. So for me personally, I wanna know what my FICO score is because that's what the car dealership is gonna use. That's what my credit card company is gonna use. That's what the bank is gonna use. Now, FICO, they say the excellent credit is between 800 and 850. Now, there's different kinds of FICO scores as well. That's a different topic. So there's a FICO 2, there's a FICO 8, there's many, many different FICOs that may be used when calculating uh, or reviewing certain credit based on what it is that you're applying for, okay? So if you're applying for a credit card, that is a different, that's a card score, that's a FICO card, credit card score. If you're applying for an auto loan, they have a FICO 8 that they normally use for auto loans. If you're applying for a mortgage, they might use a FICO 2 score. So all these different scores are different calculations of your credit, your credit history, okay? But for our purposes right now, no matter how they calculate it, we know what we need to do. We know what those major factors are that go into this calculation. We can control that, okay? So we're not trying to control things that we can't control. Let's just do what we can do, okay? And what we can do is understand these five factors on how this credit score is calculated and how we can be in that 800 club, baby. Cause that's shit, you know, you boy, you boy there. Now let's do this together. Let's do this together, okay? So we're not trying to control things that we can't control. Let's just do what we can do. So now we've discussed what the credit bureaus consider to be excellent credit, okay? FICO, 800 to 850, excellent, okay? Vantage, 750 to 850, and you're excellent. So we've got that down. Now, what is the number one thing that makes up these five factors of your credit score? The number one thing is your payment history. That's gonna make up 35% of your total score, a huge portion of it. But payment history, that's us, that's what we control. So as long as we pay our bills on time, every month, never late, okay? Never late. Do you have a credit card, anything, I always suggest Listen, at least do the minimum payment on that automatically through the bank account every month, okay? We can go back and pay it all off because that's what I always recommend, is to pay your cards off, use credit wisely, use it for the things that you need, and pay it off because it's gonna get greater later, okay? We're not gonna, you know, try to, get, to hit the lottery for, for 5,000 on a credit card. No, this isn't a credit card lottery. This is planning for the future and building your credit up. So let's make at least the minimum payment 
automatically every month and I always recommend no debt let's pay it off in full or leave a very very small amount on there okay now there's different philosophies even with that some people say pay it all the way down some people say leave a little bit on there sometimes it's good to leave a little bit on there remember everybody got to get a little piece of the cake you know what i mean let the credit card company have a little piece a couple dollars is not going to make a difference let them charge interest on the little five six seven percent let them get their little taste everybody want to taste so it's no problem but let's keep that payment history 100 everything's got to be paid on time every time every month 35 percent of the score depends on it that's the number one factor the second thing which is 30 percent of the total score okay so number one we've got our payment history that was 35 percent second credit utilization okay what is credit utilization? That's how much of our credit that we're using. How much is being reported on our credit bureau that, listen, you know, for example, we have $10,000 credit limit on a particular card. If we're using 9,000 of that, we're using 90% of our available credit on that card. Not good. No good. No, 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 no. We don't not, we don't want that. No. Okay. So. What do we do now? What we are going to do is pay our bill on time every time and pay it off, no interest charge, okay? Good. So, let's pay those credit cards down, okay? Now, whether you leave 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%, 5 to 7% on there every month, that's fine, okay? But we wanna have a very small utilization of our credit. So what that means is that when creditors pull our credit and they see, well, how much of our credit are we using? Oh, well, they're like, well, he's, they've, they've got plenty of credit at their disposal. It's okay, give them more. That's how the game works. You get the money when you don't need the money. Keep that in mind. Banks want to land and offer you credit when you're not searching for credit or don't need the credit Or if you you if you're using all your credit, they're gonna be like, oh, what's the problem with this guy? What's happening? He's using all his credit. What is he gonna pay us back? They don't know so that's what we have to make sure that we control Make sure your stuff is paid down Not just on time pay it down that's the credit utilization part of it very very important it's the second thing that make the second biggest thing that makes up the whole credit score so we've got 35 percent going to payment history 30 percent going to credit utilization that's 65 percent just in those two items now let's talk about the next one Okay, so now the third thing, length of credit history. Yes, 15%, okay? 15% of our credit score is based on how long we have had our credit history. When, how old is our oldest credit card or loan or credit experience? How long have we been building and developing our credit, okay? So with this, Listen, we have to go slow. Unless, you know, you've been been in the game for a few years, you're fine. You've developed that good credit history, that length of credit. You haven't applied so much for credit. You're not searching for credit because that's the type of stuff that they'll use to deny you. Oh, your credit history isn't long enough. But my score is 760. And so? So they don't care sometimes. So one thing is not going to necessarily beat out another one, all right? All of these factors need to be considered. Every single factor can be considered in a acceptance as well as a denial, okay? Now this portion here, credit history, length of credit. We can mitigate this a little bit if you have an authorized user. 
that you can become an authorized user, let me say that, on another individual's account that has a super long credit history. And that favorable credit history can also transfer over to you as an authorized user, all right? A little tip. Now, if you're an authorized user on an account and you go to apply for a new credit card or something like that, I know that Chase does this for sure. Sometimes they'll ask you, oh, well, you know, you've got a, uh, an account here because they know they're not stupid if you're a primary or if you're an authorized user on an account. So when they ask, well, it's, you know, ma'am or sir, you are an authorized user on this particular card. Are you responsible for that card? Now, what are you gonna say? Cause you're an authorized user. You may or may not, I don't know. Okay, but what they want to hear is, yes, you are making the payments on that account, you're using it, you're responsible for it, okay? If you say, no, well then, uh, that means that's not really you. Read between the lines. I'm not a professional, uh, all that nonsense, uh, disclaimer, whatever. You know what's up. It's entertainment purposes. I'm expressing my opinion. Thank you very much. So, all of that is going to play a role when you go out to try to get another card, another loan, uh, and start building business credit along with your personal credit. That's why I'm talking about this today because once you put that business credit as well as that personal credit together, that is big time bumba. That is the jackpot, okay? Okay, so now we're at number four, which makes up 10% of our credit score and it's new credit, all right? So new credit is gonna affect us in a couple of different ways, all right? Number one, new credit is going to put a hard inquiry on our credit report. So that's going to show up as, yes, you know, we've applied for that account. We are looking for credit. Whether we got it or not, we applied. It's right there. Everybody can see it as an inquiry, all right? So now the number two way, if you got the credit card or loan or whatever that you've got, when it comes to credit cards, and we've also talked about number three, which is length of credit history, okay? Your credit history. When you open up a new card, obviously that's brand new. So it's not years old. So you just opened it up. And if you have another card, for example, that was opened up a year ago, and now you've got a new card, so what is our average credit history? What is our average length of credit history? It's only six months, because they're gonna take that average. So we've gotta be careful because that's going to also affect that number three point, which is 15% of our credit. So even though new credit only accounts for 10%, it's going to affect number three, which is total length of credit history. I hope all this is making sense, but all this is really, really important. Now to make a long story short, we don't wanna apply for too many cards. We don't wanna to have too much new credit. We wanna space it out so it doesn't impact our inquiries. It doesn't show up as we're looking for credit, searching for credit, and also once those accounts age, those are gonna be helpful in anchoring down our credit length, our history of credit okay as far as time goes so this is very very important and it's the number four thing now let's move on to the next one our fifth category is credit mix yes 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 <laughs> now the credit mix is going to make up another 10 percent of our overall credit score now credit mix what is it you might ask so what lenders want to know is, can you handle a mixture of different types of credit? So when we're looking to get those 800 scores, we want to have a nice mix of credit as well. So we want to have credit cards. We'd be great if we had a, a mortgage. It'd be great if we had a car. It'd be great if we had other loans that are installment loans, a personal loan, something like that. Now this can be mitigated, all right? There are a number of lenders out there, one being self-lender, 
they have a program where you can have a secured loan, a secured installment loan. So that's gonna put that good mixture of credit on your credit report to start getting us up into those 800s. That's where we wanna be, right? Now, finally, let me just say this. The video, yeah, 800, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's got videos how to get 800, okay? But let me be real with you. Do you really need 800? No. You can accomplish the same thing with an 800, 850 score as you 95% that you can with a 740 or a 760. People that are going to be utilizing their credit, be making moves out here, you might not maintain that 800 all the time. It's okay. I've seen 800 scores get denied for credit, as w and, and 740s and 760s get approved. So don't stress it, don't worry about it. Let's get up there, baby. We gonna we can get to the 800. You know when you relax, riding on the, the horse in the backyard on the, well, you know with the feet, you know the mountain view and you know all that kids playing in the in in, in the yard. We'll get to we can get to that anytime. And if you're there, God bless you. I'm in, in, you know. But is it really, really that important? No, let's focus on building that personal credit and putting it with that business credit to get the real good money. So let's do that. Let's build the business credit, the personal credit. Let's get these scores up. Let's get these lines in. Let's get these businesses started. Let's talk about it. Comment below, like, please subscribe. Thank you very much. I appreciate it very much. Thank you very much. Until then, you know who it is. B O B, baby. I'ma see you out here, baby. Cause I'm out here, and you know what I do. Hit it, K.